Good evening, everyone. Time for another member update. So we're looking at the year performance here of silver. This is the really long-term chart. So you can see that last year started right there. We got a low. We'll just go. We'll call it from the low um, around 14, 1440 or so, 1450. You can see we're hanging down around 1380. So pretty much a sideways year for silver. A few percent loss. Of course, uh, there were a lot of other commodities that, that lost a lot more than silver. One of these we're going to be looking at is natural gas. Um, but that's because silver has already lost so much. Uh, I mean, if silver loses 50% from here, we're talking about, you know, $7 silver. But then again, the price of silver has not followed the paper price. We're st we still got a pretty big difference. Um, we're going to look at that in a second here. But uh, I want to take a look at this story over on Zero Hedge about the price of natural gas. Now let's actually look at some commodity charts before we do. So you can see this is a natural gas long-term chart. And you can see here it's uh, unprecedented territory. Now we have a little, a little rally here uh, recently, but really nothing in the, in the long term. You can see down below the two line, which is lower than anything that's on the chart all the way back to 1994. Um, and we're going to talk about the impact on prices. Uh, some other stuff that's kind of interesting here, you can see the uh, crude oil price here, um, very, very low, um, around 37. And uh, it's been, you know, lower or around the lows of the last financial crisis and just hanging around there. But then again, if we jump over to the uh, gasoline chart, you can see that uh, gasoline's nearly as high as it was uh, at the $150 peak. So a big, big disconnect between the price of gas. I mean, we should be seeing, you know, uh, less than $1.50 a gallon for gas, but um, we're going to see why those things just don't seem to work out when we get get to looking at our fake markets that we have here. So this is a really interesting story. This is from Zero Hedge again, and this is uh, about the natural gas rate hikes going on in California. So I wanted to read this, and then we're going to comment about it and about it, the relationship to silver. Uh, so it's called Monopoly Much, America's Largest Utility Hikes Rates, Most in Nine Years Despite Natural Gas Price Crash. Happy New Year, Californians. Behold the power of monopoly and regulatory capture. Submitted by Wolf Richter, WallStreet.com. We want our customers and their families to know that we are here, here to help them make smart energy choices and save money whenever possible. Could Lori Giamona senior VP and chief customer officer at Pacific Gas and Electric on Wednesday between Christmas and New Year's when no one was supposed to pay attention. It was the propitious day when the beloved utility that distributes gas and electricity in the northern two-thirds of California announced that on January 1st it would jack up its rates. America's largest electric utility and the second largest gas utility by number of customers the utility whose 2010 gas pipeline explosion in San Bruno, just south of San Francisco, killed eight people, injured another 66, and burned down 38 homes. The utility that is still digging in its heels after five years since the explosion is now under investigation by the California Public Utilities Commission because it failed to deliver certain documents. The very same Public Utilities Commission that is being probed by a federal grand jury for potential illegal ties between the regulators and the executives of PG&E in this ballooning corruption scandal. Well, this beloved utility now has announced a very special New Year's resolution. It will hike natural gas rates for the average residential customer by 4% and electricity rates by a stunning 8.5% for a combined rate increase of 7%, the steepest since 2006. The average small business is going to get whacked by a combined rate increase of 5.1%. That's on top of the 6% rate increase it had successfully inflicted on its customers a year ago. Rate increases despite a plunge in the price of natural gas. 
That plunge started in 2008 and has hit new lows on December 17th when the price of natural gas hit $1.68 per million BTU at the NYMEX, the lowest since March 23rd, 1999, when adjusted for inflation. That's the inflation adjusted price was lowest. It was below the prices tracked by NYMEX going back to 1990. This historic price collapse has been eviscerating the U.S. natural gas industry and its investors. Much of the power PGE, PG&E distributes is generated by natural gas, and all the natural gas it distributes is, well, the same natural gas whose prices plunge to historic lows. In fact, in its third quarter financial statement, PG&E admits as much. Its cost of electricity over the first nine months of 2015 dropped 8.8% year over year, and its cost of natural gas plunged 36%. The thing is, despite the juicy rate increases imposed at the beginning of 2015, operating revenues have fallen about 1% so far in 2015. As Californians use less energy from their beloved utilities, it's an existential struggle all utilities face. However, the company pointed out that the rate increases won't be used to pay for the fines and penalties associated with the San Bruno pipeline explosion. Those will largely be covered by the proceeds from a public offering last August of 6.8 million common shares at $51.90 per share. Wells Fargo, the underwriter for the offering, got a bundle of fees, but money is fungible. It's like water. It flows wherever gravity pulls it, and no one can separate it. So why the rate increase? San Francisco Gate says, the changes follow a decision by the California Public Utilities Commission in 2014 to let PG&E collect an extra $2.37 billion in revenue from its customers over three years from the start of 2014 through the end of 2016. The additional money will pay for maintenance and upgrades to PG&E's sprawling electricity grid and its natural gas pipeline network. What else is PG&E doing with this moolah? It's paying rich quarterly dividends of 45 cents per common share with 489 million shares outstanding in the third quarter dividends for a year would amount to 890 million dollars so for the three-year period in question 2014 to through 2016 this would amount to give or take 2.7 billion dollars more than enough to pay for the maintenance and upgrades of its system if it faced real competition or a real regulator PG&E would be forced to pay for maintenance and upgrades with other means than rate increases when its input costs are plunging while it's paying out a rich dividend. And how are its customers supposed to deal with the rate increases? PG&E, according to the San Francisco Gate, quote, urged its customers to contact the utility for ways to save energy. So turn down the heater, put on another fleece, buy more efficient appliances, and hunt down subsidies for low-income households. As always, it's just the beginning. In September, PG&E asked the Public Utility Commission for another $2.7 billion in revenue increases for the three-year period of 2017 through 2019. That particular amount of money would be used ostensibly to prepare for natural disasters. Over the same period, it would still pay out $2.7 billion in dividends. The PUC, under federal grand jury investigation for its cozy ties to PG&E, has not yet voted on this doozy. Turns out for the utilities, the party is over again. Read, Dear Electric Utility CEO, Merry Christmas and Cut the Dividend. So that is just uh, absolutely shocking. That is a perfect uh, statement of the state of the nation and the way things are right now. Uh, the rich getting richer, the poor getting poorer, even though the r cost of the commodity, the, the natural gas, has absolutely plummeted um, based on the natural gas chart uh, compared to the prices that People were paying for natural gas in, say, uh, 2005 and 2008. Um, they should be paying 80% less. Their bills should be 80% or even more uh, down by that much. But that doesn't happen. It never happens. And uh, that's because uh, these are protected monopolies. Um, they're the worst form of both worlds. It's worse than a free market and it's even worse than a regulated utility because it's not regulated. 
the the utility commission is corrupt um, so it's the worst of both worlds it's a protected monopoly and uh, that's the same thing that we have in silver so you can see here at the silver chart we have thirteen dollars and eighty four cents for silver so you would think after all this time you can see here we had about a fourteen dollar price coming into the year fourteen fifty or so we hovered the whole year at least half of the year here around uh, fourteen and a half bucks and we're closing off the year at thirteen eighty so you'd think you could get some silver uh, some of the popular silver down there at that price but you can't um, we go over to uh, compareSilverPrices.com and you can see the cheapest you can get a Silver Eagle 17 bucks, and most of them are more than that some of them near up to 18 bucks. Uh, we still got a huge premium on uh, the silver bags, uh, a good 25% premium for junk silver, so two or three bucks um, up above the spot price. Uh, the Australian Philharmonics and the Canadian Maple Leafs are, are down around 16 bucks. But then again, when we're below 14 for silver, that's still a huge uh, percentage. Why is that? Well, the reason why is the same thing in silver that you have in natural gas. You have this monopoly. Um, in this case, it's the Silver Users Association that's interested in suppressing the price of silver. In the case of the utilities, it's just this gigantic uh, um, public uh, operation with all these vested interests. And the actual cost of the commodity doesn't really have that much of an impact because there's so much overhead built into the operation um, that uh, even moving the price of the commodity itself to zero uh, would probably not have that much of an impact on price. It could literally be free and there's so much bureaucracy and everything else going into the cost of these things that uh, the price would probably not be impacted. So there's another example where we have the rich getting richer and the poor getting poor, uh, the rich are collecting dividends on the utility stocks that they own, and the poor and the small business are paying a 7% increase in the cost of their power while the price has fallen by 80 or 90% from the highs that it was previously. So the rich, again, are getting richer, the poor are getting poorer. Um, that's the way it has always been. I'm afraid that's the way that it's continuing. Um, what's going to be the turnaround for silver? Well, I think the turnaround is going to be when this thing breaks. What's it going to take to break it? It's either going to take enough people coming in with enough money demanding physical delivery, or uh, it's just going to be uh, grinding itself out to where they stop producing enough silver to meet the demand and eventually prices have to rise. But uh, up until that point, it's just like the protected monopoly in natural gas. It's a protected monopoly for the Silver Users Association, and the government is right there uh, protecting their low prices. And we'll talk to you next time.